Welcome to our next module in 10 ways to be a great team player in challenging times, which is about being cooperative and helpful. And in our fifth module, we started to talk about the importance of offering help and commending people who are willing to ask you for help. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper on this topic. So here are some things to look for. Being cooperative and helpful means you figure out ways to work together to accomplish a job despite differences you may have with other team members, right? You may have personal differences, personality differences, different working styles, and yet it is your job to figure out ways to work together to accomplish a goal. And if you're feeling like you're willing to mix things up a little bit, you might say to somebody, I know that you and I have different working styles and different working styles is what is called morally neutral language, right? As opposed to, I know that I'm attentive to detail and you just don't care. You're willing to put anything out there. That is different working styles, but not morally neutral. So I know that we have different working styles and I think we should leverage that or at least put that aside so that we can get this goal accomplished. What do you think? Or we have different working styles. How can we get the most out of this to get this project done? Okay. So you got to figure out ways to work together despite differences. And that may include working with somebody that you don't like, which is the nature of work and, uh, adulting, I have to say. Okay, you respond to requests for assistance with a visible positive attitude and affect. So think about the difference between, sure, I can help you with that, and sure, yeah, I'll help with that, right? So if you're going to help, you got to help with your whole body or say no or renegotiate for not now but some other time. But please don't transfer your experience of a burden to another person, it will sour the whole experience and it definitely will not contribute to a climate where other people feel comfortable asking you for help. And if you're like, great, I don't want other people to ask me for help. Um, I want you to think a little bit about that. Maybe it means that you need to do a better job of advocating for your own priorities at work because you feel overloaded and have a conversation with your manager, but it is actually an unacceptable attitude at work to not want anybody to ask you for help. I'm sorry if that was a little harsh, um, but I feel strongly about that. You take the initiative to offer help to a team member who may be struggling. If you see somebody having a hard time, come up to them and say, uh, is this something that I could help you with, right? You don't have to embarrass them. Definitely don't embarrass them. But to say, you know, I've been through something like this before. I've done a project like this before. Would it be helpful for me to step in a little bit? And if they say no, step back, unless you notice that they're actually really going in the wrong direction and it's going to cost the team time, money, reputation, some other kind of cost. And you tell others if you cannot help rather than saying yes and dropping the ball. You will not be considered reliable and delightful. You will not be considered cooperative and helpful. You will not be considered a good communicator if you say yes to helping lots of people and then you do not help. You do not help at high quality. You do not help at the deadline that you said that you would help. So if you cannot help, tell somebody no, explain why, maybe make a counteroffer for what you can help them with or when you can help them, but saying that your help and then not being there to help will undermine the trust that you have in your relationship and is definitely not what your team needs in challenging times. So you not, may not be as helpful as you think you are. And we're going to talk about some behaviors. This comes out of the book that I wrote with my daughter, Sophie Regal. It's called Go to Help, 31 Strategies to Offer, Ask for, and Accept help. And so here are some ways in which we think we're being helpful, but actually create a culture or climate where people will not ask us for help. And again, if you don't want people to ask you for help, 
Number one, that's not really an acceptable attitude at work. Number two is then you need to get a handle on your own work so that you get rid of some things that make it impossible uh, for you to help other people. So you're probably not being helpful if you offer help to people without asking for feedback on how helpful it actually was. And this is something that most people do. So if you're going to help someone, ask them, how helpful was this? And be open to the feedback. You may not be as helpful as you think you are if you say, I told you so, when you offered help to somebody and they didn't take it. Yuck, don't be that person. If you expect to be thanked repeatedly for your help, one thank you is enough. If you consider yourself more of an expert than the other person thinks you are, you're probably not being very helpful. If you assume that helping somebody else means sharing your own experience, no, your own experience may actually shut down their willingness to accept help from you. Maybe they don't want to hear your experience. I promise you my kids do not want to hear my experience. And my coaching clients are not interested in my experience. It's about them. It's not about me. So ask if they want to hear your experience before you assume that is helpful. Assume that helping means let me fix it for you or let me tell you how to fix it. For those of us who are problem solvers, especially in challenging times, this is what we think help is. I'm going to do it for you or I'm going to tell you how to do it. And there are uh, at least 31 other strategies that you can try other than those two. You offer to assist or support, and then you're like, you know what? It'll just be easier for me to do it myself. This is the one that I personally need to work on all the time because sometimes I just go, it's easier for me to do it myself. It'll be better for me to do it myself, but that doesn't actually make me a helpful colleague or team member. If you have strings attached to your help, so anything that sounds like, okay, I'll help you here, but as soon as you've said the but, the helpful, the help is not helpful. Number nine, if you let the other person know overtly or covertly that they shouldn't need help, um, I'll help you, but you really should know how to do this by now, right? That's not helpful help. And then finally, if you offer help to other people when you can't actually help them, when you don't want to help them, and we talked about getting a handle on that, or you shouldn't help them, right? It's something that they need to learn themselves. So case in point, uh, with my daughter, Sophie, who co-wrote this book with me, she reached out to me and said, Mom, I need to book a hotel room online. I've never done that before. She's young, even though she's written a book. And could you help me book a hotel room online so that I know how to do that? So what did I do? I booked the hotel room for her and I said, it's already booked and the room is on me. And she said, yeah, but I still don't know how to book a hotel room. So I was trying to be helpful and you know what I wasn't? Helpful. So even for people who are experts on help, sometimes get caught in this. So you want to be really mindful around what you think is helpful. And a great question to ask your team members would be, how can I make your job 10% easier right now? I want you just to think about how it would feel if somebody asked you. And let's assume that when you ask them, they're going to turn around and ask you back. So I want you to go into that conversation already knowing what you would say around what somebody could do to make your job 10% easier right now. Great question to bring to your team members, and I'll see you for the next module.